Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Tina Mary. My name is Darab Burdi. My name is Barit Horvat. My name is Gergő Sükös. So we are Erasmus students from Hungary University of Pécs, studying at the University Pablo de Olavida in Seville in Spain. Lecture Introduction to Sociology, Lecturer Dr. Maria Jose Dartino Espejo. And we present two Marxist women, Clara Zetkin and Rosa Luxemburg. Our first uh, offer is uh, Clara Zetkin. On this slide we can see a uh, a picture about her. On the next slide, uh, there is a short introduction about uh, Clara Zetkin. Clara Zetkin was a German Marxist, uh, theorist, um, communist activist, and uh, advocate for women's rights. And she was born in uh, Germany in 1857 and died in the Soviet Union in 1933. Uh, her father, Gottfried Eisner, uh, worked as a schoolmaster, church organist, and uh, her mother was involved in the first wave of the German women's movement. Um, as his uh, schooling progressed, he learned about uh, the Russian uh, revolutionary movement and supported the German workers' movement. Later on, she studied at the Leipzig College for uh, women teachers. Um, there she became acquainted with the Social Democratic Party of uh, Germany, this is um, uh, abbreviated as uh, SPD, which was then in its uh, infancy. And uh, she made contact with uh, Osip Tetkin, with whom she later married. Uh, Tetkin was expelled from Germany because of his political connections, as well as uh, because uh, his views. Uh, so he left for Zurich and then uh, Paris a few years later. Uh, while in Paris, uh, she played an important role in the founding of the Socialist International Group. And uh, she took the name of her uh, husband, uh, um, which was Osip Tetkin. The SPD was uh, able to survive uh, for 12 years, uh, albeit illegally. Uh, despite the fact that they opposed uh, socialism in uh, Germany and even passed a law against it. Um, and this was repealed in 1890. Um, the situation for women was even more difficult as until uh, 1908, most of Germany had uh, laws in place that prohibited women from joining political parties meaning that uh, women could not uh, join any political party. Um, later on, Clara and Osip were unemployed at this time and uh, living in a party with their two children. And uh, Osip died uh, of uh, spinal disease in 1889. And Zetkin then moved to Stuttgart and uh, married the artist George uh, Friedrich Sunda. Um, during her stay in Paris, uh, Tetkin brought uh, articles on the struggle for uh, women's rights, which led to her being invited to address the founding uh, Congress of the uh, Second International in 1889. And uh, of course, accepting this uh, invitation, he soon became the leading spokesman uh, for uh, women's questions uh, in the Second International. Um, it is particularly important to point out that um, from 1891, uh, Zetkin was the founder and editor of the uh, journal Die Gleichheit in uh, Germany, which is in English uh, Equality. Uh, the subtitle of the publication was uh, For the Interest of the Working Women. Um, from the late 19 from the late 1890s onwards, Zetkin devoted uh, much of her energies to the German Socialist Uprising, uh, which in 1907 was estimated to have included more than um, 75,000 uh, women. And this was reflected in the distribution of the newspaper Die Gleichheit. Uh, later, the law banning uh, 
Women's Association was repealed, and uh, by 1914, the SPD uh, had more than um, 174,000 women members. Um, however, only one woman, um, Louise Teeth, was appointed to the party's executive committee. As, uh, as I mentioned before, um, in 1878, uh, she joined the Socialist Workers' Party, uh, which was formed by the merger of uh, two earlier parties. Um, Liebknecht was uh, one of its um, uh, founders, and uh, its name was changed in uh, 1890 to Social Democratic Party of uh, Germany, so SPD. And um, around uh, 1898, Zetkin formed a friendship uh, with the younger Rosa Luxemburg that uh, lasted 20 years. And uh, despite uh, Luxemburg's indifference to the women's uh, movement, which absorbed much of uh, Zetkin's energies, they became, became a firm political allies on the far left of the um, SPD. Luxembourg uh, once suggested that their uh, joint epitaph um, should uh, read He lied the two last men of German social democracy. Uh, here we can see the uh, speech from um, Rosa Luxembourg in uh, uh, Second uh, International. Um, the working women who aspire to social equality expect uh, nothing for their emancipation from the bourgeois movement, women's movement, which allegedly fights for the rights of women. Uh, that edifice is built on sand and has no real basis. Working women are absolutely convinced that the question of the emancipation, emancipation of women is not an isolated question, which exists in itself, but part of the great social question. They realize perfectly clear that this question can never be solved in the contemporary society, but only after a complete social transformation. <coughs> um, on the next slide, uh, we can see that uh, Clara um, was arguing against uh, World War I. And uh, with the outbreak of the First World War, uh, Zetkin lost his uh, importance in the um, SPD. And at the time of the First World War, activists, um, uh, revol revolutionaries and uh, supporters uh, gathered at the International Women's Peace Conference in Switzerland to confront uh, the concerns of workers' unity across the battle lines. Um, where uh, Zetkin spoke, um, who benefits from this war? Only a tiny minority in every nation, the manufacturers of guns and cannon, the armor plates and torpedo boats, the owners of the shipyards and the suppliers of the needs of uh, the armed forces. They have fueled hatred among the people for their own profit and thus contributed to the outbreak of war. Um, the workers have nothing to gain from this war, but everything to lose that is dear to them. Um, and Zetkin, together with uh, Karl Liebknecht, Rosa Luxemburg, Louis Kehler, and uh, other uh, influential SPD politicians, was um, totally opposed uh, to the party's policy of uh, Burg Frieden. Um, and Zetkin also organized an international socialist women's anti war conference in Berlin in 1915. Uh, she was arrested several times for her uh, opposition uh, to the war. Um, she was a uh, co founder in uh, 1916 of the uh, Radical Spartacus League, um, which is in uh, German Spartacus Bund, and uh, joined the new Communist Party of Germany in uh, 1919 becoming a member of the party's central committee and uh, serving in the Reichstag. Spartacus League, German Spartacus Bund, a revolutionary socialist group active in Germany, 
from 1914 to the end of 1918. It was officially founded in 1916 by Karl Liebknecht, Rosa Luxemburg, Clara Zetkin and Franz Mehring. The name derives from their illegally distributed pamphlets, Spartacus Briefe and so Spartacus Letters. The League developed as an offshoot of the Social Democratic Party, among elements who violently opposed Germany's role in First World War and who called for a socialist revolution. The Spartacus League was transformed into the Communist Party of Germany in 1919. Meanwhile, the Spartacists had encouraged in December demonstra demonstrations that led to the abortive Spartacus revolt in Berlin in January 1919. On January 15, Luxembourg and Liebknecht were arrested and murdered in Berlin by members of the Freikorps who had seized control of the city's police presidium. So uh, she was uh, rehabilitated in uh... Russia in the 1920s and in his later years he became uh, frustrated and uh, confused and he uh, sympathized with uh, Stalin's views during this period. Um, Selkin spent the last part of his life uh, uh, characterizing uh, fascism and uh, analyzing uh, the dangers that uh, its development posed to the um, working class. And uh, when the Nazis won a uh, America majority in the Reichstag in 1933, uh, Zetkin, as the uh, oldest member of the uh, Reichstag, was given the task of uh, chairman. And uh, from this position, he opened the session with the thunderous initiation of uh, fascism. And uh, she later uh, died in the Soviet Union. To better understand the political situation of Zetkin's time, there are three different approaches historians take in analyzing the intersection of feminists and socialists in Germany during the late 19th, early 20th centuries. The first approach many historians take is to view the two movements as completely separate due to the class-based ideologies of each movement. Socialist focuses on the oppression of the proletariat by the upper classes by feminists which in this view is characterized uh, as a distinctive middle class initiative focuses on the oppression of women in society. The second approach historian say claims that the SPD acknowledged the feminist concerns of socialist women, but subjugated the demands in favor of wider party goals. The last approach uh, by historians argues that many socialist women were in fact reluctant feminists themselves because of their conflicting gender and class loyalties. This conflict arose from a working woman's commitment to her class and her commitment to her gender. In this view, being socialist and being feminist are not mutually exclusive. Uh, in this picture, Zetkin did other German representatives at the International Workers' Conference in Zurich. Zetkin went to many conferences and was a prominent figure at socialist conventions. Her attendance is significant in that it shows her leadership in representing women and that held a spot among other influential figures of German socialism, such as Weber and Engels. Her claim is that proletarian men and women were already united in a fight against capitalism. It then makes sense for Zetkin to use this socialist perspective to argue that for women to truly benefit the socialist cause, they needed to be equipped with the same weapons, as she put in her uh, 1896 speech as their male counterparts with political and legal rights. Under this rationale, Zetkin advocated for women's rights with a purely socialist outlook. Her stance on female suffrage demonstrates her socialist reasoning. She claimed that women needed to be politically educated because in the past they have been excluded from the political arena and left ignorant. Being able to participate in politics through voting would encourage interest and education on political matters and as a legal working class woman who would naturally align themselves with socialism as a political party that addressed the needs of workers. The addition of female voters at the polls would then strengthen the voting power of socialists as a wall to affect change. Through this logic, 
uh, women strive towards towards uh, benefit socialism and so Sutkin advocated for female suffrage. Sutkin also argued for better working conditions for women. She defended female labor in her uh, 1889 speech for the liberation of women against male opponents who fair competition. She claimed that labor was essential to the emancipation for women in affording them economic freedom, which was a step towards the emancipation of the proletariat as a whole. With regard to women's labor, Sutkin had a firm belief in women, women's role as wives and mothers believing in with a woman's duty to be children, the support for the, the cause and continue in the class struggle uh, to overthrow capitalism. Sutkin claimed that women therefore needed special labor laws that would allow them to fulfill this duty, so she agitated for better working conditions. This included protected laws for working women, eight hour work days, laws against child labor, and for the legal and political equality of women. Stepping was motivated by her socialist perspective, and her desire to improve the situation of working women was intended to improve the situation of the proletariat as a whole and benefit socialists more than the individual women. According to Stepping, fascism is a dangerous enemy of the proletariat. Fascism is the strongest mass concentrated and classic expression uh, at this time of the world bourgeois general offensive. Setkin claims that the proletariat will preach humankind by replacing capitalists. It is also a question of survival for every organized worker, a question of bad working conditions and quality of life for millions and millions of exploited. So Tzatkin fought with her all power against uh, fascism, and in connection with the working class fight against fascism, Tzatkin emphasized several points. Um, the first is workers' self-defense. Uh, workers' self-defense is crucial in order to confront the fascist terror campaign. Above all, this includes um, organized workers' defense uh, guards to combat the fascist attacks. And the second is the United Front Action. So the United Front action to combat fascism is essential, involving all working class organizations and current, regardless of political differences. Um, in addition to combating fascism physically, when necessary to defend itself, the working class needs to, needs to combat fascism mass appeal politically, making special efforts among middle class players. And here is a quote from Tzatkin, which is uh, very important uh, in this uh, relation. Uh, the Italian Communist Party surely also made a policy error in viewing fascism solely as a military phenomenon and overlooking its ideological and political side. Let us not forget that before beating down the proletariat uh, through acts of terror, Fascism in Italy had already won an ideological and political victory over the workers' movement that lay at the root of its strength. It would be very dangerous to fail to consider the importance of overcoming fascism ideologically and politically. Um, combating fascism in this way means, above all, demonstrating the proletarian leadership's absolute determination to fight to take power out of the hands of the bourgeois in order to resolve capitalism's uh, social crisis and putting forward the program aimed at uh, cementing the alliances necessary to do so. And the second belief that the perspective of a revolutionary fight for governmental power based on an alliance of the exploited and oppressed social classes was essential for victory over fascism. So this is what Zetkin thought about uh, fascism. And I would like to ask a question from uh, Bali. Can you Bali, please come here. So, because what do you think? Um, can somebody be a Marxist and a feminist at the same time? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, I mean, as we see, 
Clara Zetkin uh, wanted, for example, voting rights as well uh, as better working conditions for women uh, in order to women be able to fight against capitalism, for example. So I think so. Yeah. Thank you very much, Barney. Yeah. I will now talk about the Horthy regime that governed Hungary between uh, 1920 and 1945 because Kona refers to Horthy Hungary many times in her writings. On November 16, 1919, Miklos Horthy marched into Budapest at the head of the National Army. He had organized and became governor of Hungary. This period was the period of King Lex kingship in Hungary, King Charles IV returned to Hungary twice, but was unsuccessful. In accordance with the Antenne Agreement, on 6 November, the National Assembly, for the uh, fourth time in Hungarian history after 1620, 1707, and 1849, declared the destroyment of House of Habsburg in Hungary. The law was not countermanded by the king, and Horthy promulgated it as the ruler's governor, which created a paradoxical public law situation. The actual power relations were no longer affected. Horthy's governorship was finally consolidated. The country was striving for political independence. Extremist parties were contained, but there was no democracy. The socialist regime called the Horthy regime the country of three million beggars. However, this was mainly due to the Great Depression, and its effects were followed by a series of social measures. The system of the Horthy era can be described neither as fascism nor as civil democracy, but as anti-democratic limited parliamentarianism. Zetkin said, a new Horthy Hungary has arisen in Italy. According to her, the problem in Hungary was that the international authority did not intervene. The Fourth Congress of the Communist Party International created a provisional uh, committee under Karacetkin. Its aim was to continue the fight against fascism on an international basis. The Commission called on the international authority to organize defensive actions. It is the duty of all political organizations to fulfill this duty, independent of their political orientation. She said that in order to overthrow the terror, the action of the international authorities was necessary and that they must act to prevent the Italian workers' movement from being destroyed. Hola chicos, we will talk about Rosa Luxemburg. Rosa Luxemburg was a prominent German economist, Marxist, ideologist, philosopher, revolutionary and activist. She is considered a well-known advocate of socialism and anti-war activism. Throughout his life, he was known not only for his anti-war uh, activism, but also for his, uh, her advocacy of socialism as the ideal social form. During her lifetime, she was a member of the Communist Party of Germany, the Independent Social Democratic Party and the Social Democratic Party of Germany, but left the SPD because of its support for Germany's participation in World War I, which inspired her to co-found the party that later became the Communist Party of Germany. Luxembourg is undoubtedly one of the best known Marxist thinkers. Below are quotes and sayings from Rosa Luxemburg considered the martyr or to the socialist cause. In 1884, she enrolled in an all-girls gymnasium secondary school where she remained until uh, 1887. In 1887, the second female uh, gymnasium was a school that rarely accepted Polish applicants and the admission of Jewish children was even more exceptional. At this school, Rosa studied the works of Polish poets and writers in secret circles, officially forbidden by the Russian Empire's policy. Uh, from 1886, Rosa was a member of the illegal Polish left-wing Proletarian Party, which was founded in 1882 and uh, 20 years before the Russian parties. Uh, she began he, her political ad, uh, activities by organizing a general strike. As a result, four leaders of the Proletarian Party were executed and the party was dissolved. Although the remaining members, including Luxembourg, continued to meet in secret. In 1887, she passed her school leaving examination. 
Rosa was wanted by the Tsarist police, police for his activities in the proletariat. She hired in the countryside, working as a private tutor in a Dvorak. In 1889, he fled across the green border to Switzerland to avoid arrest. There, she attended the University of Zurich, like the socialist Anatoly Lunacharsky and Leo Jogges, where she studied philosophy, history, politics, economics and mathematics. She specialized in Staatswissenschaft, which is political science, economic and stock market crisis and the Middle Age. His doctoral dissertation, The Industrial Development of Poland, <coughs> Uh, the Industrielle Entwicklung Polens was formally presented uh, in the spring of 1897 at University of Zurich, which awarded him a doctorate. <coughs> he, her dissertation was published by Danker and Amlo in Leipzig in 1898. In Zurich, she was considered a specialty as she was the one of the first women in the world to hold a doctorate in economics and the first Polish woman to achieve it. In 1893, together with Leo Jogisesz, Julian Marszewski, Harriet Julian Karski, looked and founded the newspaper Sprawa Robotnica, which challenged the nationalist policies of the Polish Socialist Party. Luxembourg believed that an independent Poland could only come into being and exist through the socialist revolution in Germany, Austria, Hungary and Russia. She believed that the struggle should be fought against capitalism, not just for Polish independence. His denial uh, of the right to national self-determination provoked a physic physically disagreement with Vladimir Lenin. Together with Leo Jogisesh, he founded the Social Democracy of the Kingdom of Poland and Lithuania. Party after merging Polish and uh, Lithuanian Social Democratic Congresses, despite living in Germany for most of his adult life. Luxembourg was the main uh, theoretician of Social Democracy of the Kingdom of Poland and co chaired the party with Jogisesz, its main organizer. She remained sentimental about Polish culture. Her favorite poet was Adam Mikiewicz. And uh, she was vehemently opposed to the Germanization of Poles during the Prussian partition. In uh, 1919, she published a pamphlet against Tis in Poznan. Earlier in uh, 18 1993, uh, she had also written against the ratification of Poles by absolutist government of the Russian Empire. After the outbreak uh, of the 1905 revolution against the advice of her Polish and German comrades, Luxembourg left for Warsaw. If recognized, she would have been imprisoned by the Tsarist authorities, but the uh, October-November political strike, which was part of upheaval in Russia, and which had particularly active elements in Congress Poland, convinced Rosa that this time her place was in Warsaw rather than Berlin. She arrived on the 13th December, thanks to the passport of German friend Anna Machke, and met Yogi Sesh, who had also returned to Warsaw a month earlier on a fake passport. Together they stayed in a boarding house on the corner of Jasna Street, from where they wrote the SDKPIS illegally published newspaper, The Red Flag. Luxembourg was one of the first writers to see the potential of the 1905 revolution for democratization within the Russian Empire in the years 1905 and 1906 alone. She produced more than 100 articles, pamphlets, appeals, texts and speeches in Polish and German on the revolution. Luxembourg wanted to move to Germany to be at the center of the party struggle, but there was no way. 
she could get permission to stay there indifferently. In April 1897, she married the son of an old friend, Gustav Lübeck, to obtain German citizenship. They never lived together, and five years later, they were officially divorced. She returned brief briefly to Paris, and they moved permanently to Berlin to begin his fight for Eduard Einstein's uh, constitutional reform movement. Luxembourg hated Berlin's uh, stifling conservatism. Uh, she despised Prussian men and presented what she saw as a power of urban capitalism over social democracy. In the women's section of the German Social Democratic Party, she met Clara Zetkin, uh, with whom she formed a lifelong friendship. Between 1907 and his enlistment in 1915, she became romantically involved with Clara's younger son, which is quite interesting. As evidenced by some 600 surviving letters, most of which are now published, their uh, clear position was the goal of liberating the industrial working class and all minorities could be only achieved by revolution. <clears throat> this is a picture of uh, Rosa. So years around the World War I, Luxembourg moved to Germany in May 1898 and settled in Berlin. There she was uh, active in the left wing of the SPD, where she drew a sharp line between the views of her faction and the revisionist theory of Eduard Bernstein. She argued that the political difference between capital and labor could only be uh, co educated if the proletariat took power and made revolutionary changes in the methods of production. She wanted the re revisionists to be driven of the SPD. This did not happen, but uh, Kautsky's leadership retained the Marxist influence of his program. From uh, 2019 onwards, Luxembourg published analysis of the social economic problems of the time in Europe, European newspapers. Anticipating war, she strongly attacked German militaries and imperialism. Luxembourg called for a general strike in solidarity with the workers and to prevent the impending war, but the SPD leader refused. And in 1910, she broke with Kautsky. She was imprisoned three times between 1904 and 1906 for his political activities. In August 1914, Luxembourg, Tudar, together with uh, Karl Liebknecht, Clara Setkin, and Frank Maring founded the group the Internationale, which became the Spartacus League in January 1916. They wrote illegally anti-war pamphlets signed under the pseudomy Spartacus. After the Thracian gladiator who defied the Romans and freed slaves, Luxembourg pseudomy was Junius after Lucius Junius Brutus founder of the Roman Republic. The Spartacus League vehemently opposed the SPD support for war founding in the Reichstag and so to push Germany's proletariat towards a general anti-war strike. As a result, Luxembourg and Liebknecht were imprisoned for two and a half years in June 1916. During his imprisonment, Luxembourg was transferred twice, first to Posen and then to Breslau. Luxembourg was released from prison in Breslau on 8 November 8, 1918. A few days later, Karl Liebknecht, also released from prison, proclaimed the Free Socialist Republic in Berlin. Together with Luxembourg, she reorganized 
in the Spartacus League and founded the newspaper Die Rote Fahne. And his essay against corporal punishment he called for amnesty for all political prisoners and abolition of the death penalty. In 14th December 1918, uh, the new program of Spartacus League was published. In January 1919, second wave of revolution swept through Berlin on New Year's Day, Luxembourg declared. <coughs> in response to the uprising German Chancellor and SPD leader Friedrich Ebert, ordered the Freikorps to crush the left-wing revolution, which was defeated by 11 January 1919. Luxembourg's red flag falsely claimed that the revolution was Germany-wide. Luxembourg and Liebknecht were kidnapped uh, by rifle squad of the Freikorps Cavalry Guards in Berlin on 15 January 1919. Its commander, Captain Waldemar Pabst, together with uh, Lieutenant Horst von Krugt Hartung, uh, interrogated them under torture and then ordered a summary execution. Valent, what's your opinion? Are any of uh, Rosa Luxemburg's ideas relevant for us today? Well, uh, 100 years after the murder of uh, Rosa Luxemburg, uh, I believe the answer is yes, because in spite of the many differences between our times and hers, some of Luxembourg's most important ideas are still valuable political resources today. I contend that Luxembourg ideas are more valuable starting point for today's left than the ideas of any of other major anti-capitalist thinkers of the 20th century. Why? Firstly, she was profoundly committed to human liberation, unlike much more influential figures like Joseph Stalin or and Mao Zedong, who established a new form of class rule over workers and peasants. Her commitment to liberation was also more consistent than that of her famous contemporaries, um, Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky. Secondly, uh, we can say that the context that shaped her politics was less different for, from ours today than the Russian Empire that shaped Lenin and Trotsky's politics or even Antonio Gramsci's Italy. Still, it's a mistake to try to simply, uh, simply apply Luxembourg's politics today or look for answers to all of our questions in her writings. For one thing, capitalist society today is different from capitalism a century ago uh, in ways uh, in ways that um, the classical of workers' movement. <clears throat> for another, Luxembourg wrote before some important questions of our time had even been posed, for example, how uh, best to fight for drastic measures to reduce climate change? Can workers change highly bureaucratic unions? It's also true that she didn't address some of the questions of her time in a truly adequate way, and some of her answers to those questions were wrong. Let's say that uh, my aim here is to discuss some of what we would find in Luxembourg's thought that is relevant and important today, not what we don't find. Five ideas stand out as especially important. So the first one is uh, capitalism inevitably causes terrible destruction and eventually lead to total social breakdown. What Luxembourg uh, called barbarism with the loss uh, of the best achievements that humanity has created under capitalism unless people rise up and start the transition to different social society. Long before a total social breakdown, capitalism throws up all sorts of repression and destruction. Well, Luxembourg pressed that a system in which goods and services are produced for profit by competing firms one in which the small number of countries where that the system is most developed dominate the rest of the world, for example imperialism, is inherently destructive and leads to devastating wars. The second is uh, an advanced society based on cooperative production to meet people's needs. Socialism is possible and socialism is inherently democratic. 
And the capitalism is not simply incredibly harmful and destructive. It has also created unprecedented social cooperation and technology that represent the potential basis of a self-governing cooperative commonwealth, a society of shared plenty in which production is democratically planned to meet human needs, including a non-destructive relationship with the rest of nature. So the third one, the start of uh, a transition to socialism requires social revolution. There is no road to socialism throughout. Uh, Spice mill reforms get the struggle for reforms within capitalist society is very, very important. Luxembourg argued that work for reforms think, for example, of a higher minimum wage or controls on greenhouse gas emissions is not a long drawn or out revolution, nor is revolution a condensed series of reforms. An important point to bear in mind today when the word revolution is used so loosely. People who say their goal is social socialism, but believe it can be achieved without social revolution, do not really choose a more tranquil, calmer and slower road to the same goal, but a different goal. Okay, the fourth one, the only way the struggle to replace capitalism will ever succeed is as a massive process to self emancipation. Yes, uh, mass struggle is the key to mass ra radicalization, to many people coming to the conclusion that society needs to change from the roots. Luxembourg saw that uh, for people to radicalize on a large scale takes learning not by pamphlets and leaflets, but only in living political school by the fight and in the fight. It's the experience of collective struggle that crucial the, to changing people, forcing them to rethink their ideas so that they begin to realize that radical change is possible and necessary. The fifth one, we need internationalism, not nationalism. Luxembourg told that this day in loyalty to nation states, writing of the emptiness of nationalism as an instrument of capitalist domination. She exposed the absurdity of claims about every member of a nation having common interests. For example, consider that the Thomson family, uh, which has a uh, $41 billion net worth, and the rest of the capitalist class have in common with the most of uh, the members of Canada. She rejected calls for citizens to unite behind the governments the, that administer societies that are not really ours because they are owned and controlled by a small ruling class. Mm -hmm. uh, Rosa had some uh, quotes and uh, thoughts about the revolution, about the reforms. So Luxembourg's last known words written on the evening of her murder were about her belief in the masses and what she saw as the inevitability of triumphant revolution. The contradiction between the powerful, decisive, aggressive, offensive of the Berlin masses on the one hand and the indecisive, half-hearted calculation of the Berlin leadership on the other is the mark of his, uh, this latest episode. The leadership failed, but the new leadership can and must be created by the masses and from the masses. The masses are the crucial factor. They are the rock on which the ultimate victory of the revolution will be built. The masses were up to the challenge, and out of the, this defeat, they have forged a link into the chain of historic defeats, which is the pride and strength of international socialism. That is why future victories will spring from this defeat. Order prevails in Berlin. You foolish lefty. Your order is built on sand. Tomorrow the revolution will rise up again, clashing its weapons. And to your horror, it will proclaim with trumpets blazing, I was, I am, I shall be. So the quotes which uh, we thought the most important and um, best. So the first. Those who do not move, do not notice their chance. Um, I think we can say that uh, it's our favorite because uh, it has really good point and uh, has, has some serious meaning for nowadays too. Uh, 
So the second one, uh, the more that social democracy develops, grows and becomes stronger, the more the enlightened massive masses of workers will take their own destinies, the leadership of their movement and the determination of its direction into their own hands. The third one, being human means throwing your whole life on the scales of destiny when need be. All the wise rejoicing in every sunny day and every beautiful cloud. The most revolutionary thing one can do is always to proclaim loudly what is happening. And uh, Balin's favorite is uh, woman's freedom is the sign of social freedom. It's really deep too. And the last one, social democracy seeks and finds the ways and particular slogans of the worker struggle only in the course of the development of the struggle and gains direction for the way forward through the struggle alone. The bibliography. We can see. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your attention. We are from Hungary. Bye bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.